I'm going to move us um, in a slightly different direction here to kind of preface what we're going to do next week. Um, most importantly, I want you to understand the, the logic of like what we're doing and, and why and how we're doing it. It's basically what we've done is taken the same kinds of commands that we would have used in Rhino and we've automated them with operational data, right? We have just that, direction and magnitude. That's all we've changed. Um, and the only thing that was kind of complicated is like what we're doing with this list of numbers. So I want you to start thinking of it that way because it truly is that simple. It's a command and it's data that defines how that command is going to run as, as like, a, like, a, uh, like a program. Um, so uh, real quick, I'd like you to create some other geometry that we're going to operate with. Let's do um, a, I think we're going to do it as cells. Yeah, let's do it as cells. Um, so we're going to go to um, vector and grid and square. We're going to create just kind of like a new thing here. If you want, you can take these points and just kind of move it off to the side. Or just turn your definition off. That's fine too. This is under vector grid. Um, so by now you probably understand how this sort of thing works. Um, we have the base plane, which is fine if it stays at the origin for now. We have the size of the cells, and then we have the number or count of cells. So um, it's totally fine to just use integers for everything. So I'm going to say 0 to 20, and I'm going to make three of those. Size, X, and Y. So let's go with like a low number for how many there and something like this. Okay. 10, 10, 3, whatever. That's what I landed on. Let's work with that. I'll give you a moment to get caught up. So let's move on. Um, we're going to do something that's a little different with this one because we have cells uh, and then we have um, points. So the cells are, uh, let's take a look at what that data is. I, I want to kind of talk about this for a moment. So notice how when you look at cells here and you hover over it, it shows you um, a data branch. That's what these little brackets are. Those are data branches. Um, and then it shows you this other thing in parentheses that says n equals 10. n equals 10 is how many of the uh, rectangles, we know it's a rectangle, um, or cells are in that packet, but it doesn't tell you here in the preview that it is a rectangle. Okay, I want you to realize that. So um, when you pop a panel on there, it does show you that it is a rectangle, which means it's a curve, which means we can use it to create kind of like cool lofted stuff. We're getting into some really complex stuff now, okay? Um, anyway, let's get rid of that for a moment. Um, so we've got rectangles coming out of here. We want to modify these rectangles with a very similar system that we've created up top. Um, something like, you know, amplify and move, for instance. Um, the difference is we want them all to go in a certain direction. So I'm actually just going to take like all of this. It's quite a bit of stuff. Right? Um, I'm going to copy that, paste it, and then move it down here. Whoops, I missed, uh, missed a couple of things. These guys. Okay, so just so you know, it's everything except for like this vector two point thing. Copy, paste, move it down here. Um, and I will disconnect all of this stuff. Disconnect, disconnect, and disconnect. Oh, it's off the side of my screen. Um, Okay. Huh? By name, what they are? Well, you can see it on screen. Um, I know, I know, I know. So basically, anything that happened, that's why I did this. Like, anything that happens after the vector, that's what I took. Like, that's the easiest way to describe it because that's like the end of the definition. Um, all, basically, all like the building a series, the repeat data, the jitter, the amp, and the move. Copied that down. No. Well, what's the 
Uh, right click it and go to the disconnect button. So right click, disconnect, and then pick which wire you want to disconnect. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna pause while you guys get this done. Um, moving on now. Um, so we have the grid and then we have like an operation. And so we're gonna just start connecting those. Um, we know that we're going to move the cells. So we can already start with that. We can um, connect the cells that we're going to move to the transform. Okay, I do wanna point out the, well, actually I won't point that out yet. Um, let's do this. Let's uh, kind of then go back and find a vector. So I mentioned that uh, the vector we're gonna operate here uh, on here, we don't have a referential vector system from a center point to all these elements. So we're essentially just gonna define where it's going to go. Um, in this case, we have, uh, we can just use the vector and then the, uh, under the vector menu, there are these ones called um, unit X, that's unit X, unit Y, and unit Z. Um, unit X, unit Y, and unit Z are basically uh, an axial, so it's X, Y, and Z vector without magnitude. Um, so when I plug in unit Z, it's going to say um, 1.0, so that's like one unit of multiplication, and it's gonna go in the V direction. So if I plug uh, the vector Z in here, um, we don't have all of our data yet, but um, let's move just to um, show you how it operates, I'm just gonna drop this in. You don't have to do this. Just wanna show you how it's gonna operate. Like that. So that just moved the whole grid system one up in the Z direction. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, you didn't even need to put the amplitude in that because it defaults. But um, yeah, that's what that did. So we have uh, the vector information is gonna go in there. Yeah, values. Um, okay, now we just need the length of the list. So what we have uh, is basically a list of um, grid cells in groups. And those grid cell groups are measured in groups of 10. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, so I'm going to plug the X amplitude. Okay, yeah, I'm going to plug the cells into list length, and we're just going to see what we get. Okay. So what you're realizing, actually, what are you realizing? What do you see? Hmm? What did it do? Anybody? Huh? Yeah, it moved them on the z-axis. It did, it did move them, but what, what is interesting about this versus what we just did on the globe? The, well, yes, it is jittered, but it's not totally randomly. What, what about it is not totally random? Not quite. I'll walk you guys there. Okay. The, the key that I'm trying to get you to is that these are in rows. Why are they in rows? Think back to our first couple of lessons. Why are they in rows? No, close, but what looks different about this definition versus the one above it, right? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a quick like little move, okay? We've got, we've got this one, take a look at it graphically. What does it look like? And then what does this one look like? <laughs> this one? And this one. There's a very significant difference. What is it? This one, this one, this one, this one. This one? This one. You honestly don't need any more time. This one? This one. Nope. It's a graphic difference. Yeah. This one? This one. This one? This one. This one? This one. Come on. It's graphic. It's graphic. Huh? Oh. The question came up today from someone. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, I, 
actually, let me do it this way, okay? Hang on. What looks different between this and this? This and that. A dash line, yes, thank you. The dash line is the key. Graphic, that's what you meant by it's graphic. Yes, that's what I meant by it's graphic. I didn't say I wasn't cryptic, I, you know, but. Um, so do you remember what the dash line means? It is a tree, yes, thank you. We talked about this, I think, the first day and today. But um, anyway, it's a tree, which means the information is broken up into groups, which means when you look at this panel, it's broken up into different segments, groups of 10, because there are 10 cells, and then it all moves as one group, right? So the first displacement, this one right here, all moved the same height. Then it moved the, the second group a different height. So. Um, Yes, thank you for double checking. Um, but uh, yes, so it's all moving in groups. So what do we have to do to get it to all move individually? Now it's a real test. Hmm? You have tree branches that are grafted. And then to get the information to read. Flat, yes, flattened. You have to flatten them. Um, so when we take this list and we flatten it, you're going to see a difference over here. Watch that. Flat. There you go. So now the whole list got turned into one giant list instead of 10 different lists of 10. Um, and then now it jittered that whole list, and that's how we got this random right here. Okay? Wow. Pretty cool stuff, right? I think it's cool. I mean, if you don't think it's cool. Uh, okay, so uh, I just want to real quick, um, how much time do I have on this video? All right, I'm running a little late, but I want to show you why I did it on this, which is basically exactly the same operation that I did on the globe. It's because when I use a grid, I can operate on that grid a little differently. So I'm going to go to surface, reform, and I'm going to do a loft. And I hope to, I have not tried this exact definition yet. So I hope loft will work in this case. Um, so we have um, cells in the bottom that are like this, 100 cells. And now we have 100 cells that we've moved. Um, so in theory, that list should be one to one. Um, yeah, it should be one to one. So we've got, uh, let's do section curves. I'm, I'm not sure if loft will work on this one, but we'll try it. Plug that in. Oh, that's right. We need to graph this. So, um, all right, here's an interesting uh, perspective. So what happened here? Actually, you know what? Let me, let me jump into a sidebar. Okay, it's a little bit moving ahead of where we are right now, but I think it's a good time to explain it since we just talked about flattening and grafting. So I'm going to do it as a separate video, though.